Hi, I'm Deborah Ford, and I'd like to talk to you about our new Character Building Books for Elementary Readers category at Junior Library Guild. Because we know that you need to teach all kinds of things for your kids, we decided that perhaps you could use a category with great books that will teach your children positive messages. So these are books that are going to be fiction and nonfiction for grades two to six. And so let me tell you about some of the books that you'll see in this fall's category. A Bike Like Sergio's by Mary Beth Boltz and illustrated by Noah Z. Jones is the story of a boy named Reuben who doesn't have a bicycle. He doesn't have a bicycle at all. A bike like Sergio's is certainly out of the question because Sergio's bike is awesome. But Reuben's family doesn't have much money. And so one day when the two of the boys, two of the boys are at a store, they see a woman drop some money. And they decide, oh, we'll just keep it. And so Reuben keeps what he thought was a dollar, puts it in his book bag, and later finds out she dropped a hundred dollar bill. So at first he's pretty excited because he could buy a super bike with a hundred dollars. And he thinks about it and he goes by the bike store, but something is bothering him just a little bit. And then one day he can't find the money. And suddenly he realizes what this lady must feel like. And because he has seen her in the neighborhood, he knows where to find her, and so he takes the money back. So in this book, you have connections of um, ethics and kids doing the right things. You have a little bit of peer pressure, and we also have an economic status and trying to keep up with the Joneses. In Growing Peace, this is a nonfiction book by Richard Sobel, and it tells the story of a man named J.J. Keke, who, was, who is a Ugandan farmer, and he was in New York during the time of 9-11. And at that time, he thought, this is bad. And can we do something in Uganda to help these people? And so he went back home. And he happened to be watching the children one day. And he realized that in their farming community, there were children who were Jewish. There were children who were Christian. There were children who were Islamic. And they were all playing together. And he thought, if the children can get along, why can't we be like the children? And so they developed a group where they could all get together and all sell their coffee, because everybody sells coffee, apparently, in his community. And so they created this interfaith cooperative um, that teaches religious tolerance and community and getting along. There's a lot of... Um, of exchanging of ideas, and there's also a movie to come. The Lonely Giant, written and illustrated by Sophie Ambrose, is a story of a giant who is, like most giants, pretty gruff and tough, and he tears up his forest, and he scares away the animals, and one day he realizes there's nothing really very pretty to look at here. There's really nothing at all, and he finds a yellow bird, and he decides to keep the yellow bird in a cage so the bird can sing to him, and he can be happy, and then little by little, the bird becomes sadder and sadder and sadder, and there's no song and no joy, and he realizes that he's going to have to let this little bird go, or the bird could die. And then he starts looking around at his environment, and he realizes that the problem with his his forests and his land and the lack of animals is his own fault. And so he decides that if he wants this little bird to come back and sing for him, then he's going to have to put his forest back and he's going to have to plant and grow and encourage animals to come back. So it's a story of taking responsibility for your own actions, about taking care of your environment and paying attention to the things that are your fault. Here's a look at the inside of this picture book. So we see the giant working hard to rebuild the forest. He's mending the mountains. He's sowing the seeds. He's planting trees. Uh, Be the Change is a grandfather Gandhi story written by Gandhi's grandson with help from Bethany Hodigus and illustrated by Evan Turk. It's a story about taking care of even the little things and being appreciative of the things that you have, not being wasteful, being responsible, 
not being violent. Let's look at a little bit of the story itself. So we see these gorgeous pictures um, that Evan Turk did. Life at the Sevigrom Ashram, grandfather's service village revolved around the sun. Before daybreak, we left our beds. All 350 followers gathered for morning prayer meeting, where peace descended on us like the rays of the sun. All religions were welcome. But then the story shifts a little bit when the little boy um, throws away a pencil, just a pencil stub, and grandfather is not happy about it. Um, he calls that wasteful. And so in the rest of the story, we figure out why throwing away a little pencil is wasteful. Another similar in style kind of story is written and illustrated by Ed Young, and it just won a New York Times Best Illustration book. It's a fable about the Lord Cat, and he lives on top of this mountain. He has all these servants, and he has so much food that he never eats it all, and he just kind of poo-poos it away, and he's not very grateful for all the things that he has. Uh, and then one day, um, there is no food there is hunger on the mountain and he loses his servants he loses his food and he's starving to death and he realizes he's going to have to go out off his mountain he's going to have to ask for help he's going to have to beg for help and he hears about a monk who's been giving away food and so he goes down to where this monk is and the monk of course happily sh <coughs> excuse me shares the food with this lord cat well it turns out that the food came down the mountain from Lord Cat. It's the food that he had wasted. And so in this story, The Cat from Hunger Mountain, we learned the importance of appreciating the things that you have. And because the story is told with animals, it makes it a little bit easier to talk about that with your kids. A thing, a small thing, but big. Tony Johnson and pictures by Hadley Hooper. Not every kid is a dog lover. Some kids are afraid of dogs. And Courage is a hard thing, and sometimes talking to a person you don't know, even a nice old man, is scary too. But one day in the park, um, Lizzie is with her mom, and they're playing in the park, and there's lots of other kids, when she sees a kindly old gentleman with a dog named Cecile, and he encourages her to pet her, to touch her, to let you know, her see your hand, and little by little, they build this bond and she becomes less afraid of this dog and she makes a new friend. It reminds me of that story you probably saw on Facebook about the little girl who wanted to tell this old man happy birthday or that she was having a birthday and um, it turned out that this this grandpa man that she talked to had just recently lost his wife and he was really really sad and this little girl talking to him made a big difference in both families actually. So. It kind of reminded me of that. Those are the titles for the fall um, because there are six, six in the fall and then there'll be six in the spring. We're actually just now finding out what those six are. I'll tell you about those in a second. But um, you can also um, go on to the Junior Library Guild website and you can do a search. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. And you can see the books that are forthcoming. So here you see Dad and the Dinosaur in the Forever Garden, A Time to Act. This is, um, oh, it's Shanna Corey. You love Shanna Corey. She did The Secret Subway, which is brilliant. Um, Jabari jumps, and there's a new Grandfather Gandhi story. So that's coming in the spring. but. Just a tad about some of these new books. The first one, Dad and the Dinosaur, is a story about bravery. Uh, it's about a little boy who's not very brave. He's certainly not as brave as his dad. So he has a little toy dinosaur that's going to help him become brave. I love this because it's Jennifer Cholinko who did the um, Al Capone series that you probably have in your library. Um, this is a picture book. She hadn't done a picture book in a while, so I was delighted to see this. And Dan Santat, you know, as the um, Caldecott winning author of Ventures with Beagle. And um, this year he has won Are We There Yet? So that's coming soon in the spring. And there are other titles, as I showed you, 
that are coming in the spring. But outside of the character building elementary, there are lots of books that you can use as you're trying to teach your children ethics and kindness and respect and about being friends and those kinds of things. And so let me tell you about a few of those that have come out this fall. The first one I want to share is A Hat for Mrs. Goldman. It's a story about knitting and love, but it's a cross-generational um, story about a little girl named Sophia and her neighbor Mrs. Goldman and they work together to make these hats for babies and and other people who might need a little yarn warmth and um, one day Sophia realizes as they're walking out in the very cold that Mrs. Goldman doesn't even have her own hat and so Sophia decides that even though she's terrible at knitting she's very good at making the pom-poms that go on the top that she'll just make a hat for Mrs. Goldman when she does it's about as bad as she thought it might be but then she gets an idea and decides to make those little pom-poms to cover up all the boo-boos on her hat. And so now Mrs. Goldman has her own hat. It's a great story for teaching kids to pay it forward and thinking about others. Um, it's also a good book about diversity because um, Mrs. Goldman is Jewish and she uses a lot of Jewish terms. And it's also good for STEAM. If you have a maker space or you're teaching kids about making things um, because it's a story about knitting and in the back, um, there are directions for how to knit a hat and directions for how to make Sophia's pom-poms. Another book about diversity that you could use with this age group that's in a different category is the city elementary category. There's a book called Book Uncle and Me and it takes place in India and it's about um, it's about a girl who um, Yasmin, every day she passes by the free library that's run by a retired teacher on the corner. And so you, the books are free. You take one, you read it, and you bring it back. Um, or you can bring books, but he's got all these books. And so, and Yasmin goes by there every day, but one day she goes by and he's not there. It turns out there's been, um, he got a letter from the city saying, you're not allowed to be here. You didn't pay taxes for this corner. It's also the time for an election. And so Yasmin and her friends decide that they want to know who will help get Book Uncle back in business. And so they write letters to all the people running for the mayor. And then they find the one who would put the Book Uncle back and they decide to campaign for him, including making sure everybody gets out and vote. So it's a great story about voting and community and ownership and and then, of course, the, the love and joy of reading. And then in um, the E plus category, there's easy reading, um, which is easy reading, um, is a book called A Taste of Freedom. And it's all about Gandhi and nonviolence and his great salt march where everybody followed him to the sea. But the other thing I wanted to tell you about is that as a JLD member, once you buy a category, then you're eligible to buy everything else. Um, and so at some point, books go down even as low as $5. And right now, A Taste of Freedom is marked on clearance to $5 until they're gone. So you can do a search and you can find books that are five, seven, nine dollars um, as long as you're a JLG member. Um, in the primary category, there's a wonderful book this fall called Samson in the Snow, written and illustrated by Philip C. Stead. And it's a story of a little mammoth and a little bird. And there are all these dandelions, and they, they're worried that snow is coming. But the little bird is want to take some dandelions to her friend who's having a really sad day. And... Um, off she goes with her little dandelions, and then all of a sudden it starts to snow, and Samson begins to be worried about his little friend. And so off he goes to walk because he says, and this may be the best line this year, it is better to walk than to worry. And so off he goes to find his little friend, and along the way he finds another little friend who's trying to find his friend. And so the two of them team together to find those that are missing in the snow and the what happens at the end will um, maybe make you have to have a tissue but it's a great story about friendship and about being unselfish and um, gorgeous illustrations for the older kids in in elementary um, 
there's a city elementary category, which we talked about, Book Uncle, and this one is on the back end. It's like on a fifth, sixth grade interest level, and it's a story about a boy named Troy who lives in the city, and he got in trouble. He keeps getting in trouble at school, and so what they decide to do is put him in this program where he's going to be working with horses. In fact, horses that um, are polo horses. And so he's never been around a horse, so it's a whole new thing. And the whole cleaning out the barn and that kind of stuff. But it, it makes a big change. And the next thing you know, he has an opportunity to be a writer. Um, so it's a story about a boy who's looking for where's direction and finding forgiveness of himself and learning to live in his own circumstances. So it's a great book, and it's written by a debut novelist. So I think your kids will like it. <clears throat> One more in the biography elementary category, and I think if I had to choose another category that almost always has some sort of character building something, it would be the biography. So you might want to consider that as a category that you want to add. Um, Donna Janelle Bowen has this amazing book, gorgeously illustrated by Daniel Minter, about um, Doc Key and the horse, whose name is Jim Key. Jim, the horse, could do math, he could point people out, he was just amazing. And it all became of, because of kindness, because of how he trained the horse. And they went around and they did um, exhibits and uh, performances. Um, just a really fascinating story about patience and kindness. It also just won an Orbis Pictus Award, which is a, an award given by the National Council of Teachers of English for um, nonfiction, and so it just won one of those. So certainly a book that you want to check out. Waylon, for our middle of the road, third to fifth grade readers, Waylon, one awesome thing by Sarah Pennypacker. Sarah said just recently that she missed Clementine, and so she looked back in Clementine's class and found a kid that she could give another story. And so in Waylon, we we learn about being friends. You know how in the middle of elementary school, sometimes the boys, none of the girls do it too, and they kind of split up into the cool kids and the not so cool kids. Well, it's happening in Waylon's class, and he just wants everybody to get along. Why can't we just all be friends? And then all of a sudden comes back a kid that they thought they'd gotten rid of. Um, <clears throat> this kid supposedly has been in jail, in prison, and he's in third grade, so probably not. But we have that whole stereotype and rumors and what people say. Um, and so Waylon's got to step up to his own words. He can't just make a decision and not be friends with somebody based on stuff that he's heard or feel just like those other kids. It's a great first book in a new series, and your kids will love it. As I said earlier, you don't have to just have the character building um, elementary category. You can do some searching yourself. So you would just come into JuniorLibraryGuild.com and you would go down to the subject or topic and say you are looking for books about friendship. So you just type in friendship and you actually could just go search if you wanted to. You can narrow it down and say I want ebooks or I want audiobooks. You can say what year you want. You can say what reading level you want or interest level. You could even say just show me the five dollar books. But just for time, I'm going to say show me friendship. And so here is one book that showed up. Um, and the reason it showed up is because down at the bottom there's topics. So I can click here for friendship and now I can see all these books that have something to do with friendship. And you can see there's 19 pages. So there are plenty of books for you to choose from. And that's how you search for more books in that manner. Also at JLG, we're trying to do more things that give you not just the book, but what to do with the book, etc. So one of the things that we have is a Pinterest account. And so you can go to Junior Library Guild at Pinterest and you can follow us and you'll see a character building board. And as we as we look at that, um, you can see that there are titles that you might choose. Um, I'm adding articles that will help you um, teach 
character building and kindness, some character education classes, some lesson plans for character education, as well as adding titles um, in the character building category and beyond. And then last but not least, you have enough to do. So one of the things that I do is to make sure you have resources that you could use to teach with your, um, with your kids. So you can go into um, the JLG Live Binders and you can choose a um, category. In this case, I've chosen Elementary 3 to 6. And here's Book Uncle and Me, which is a book that we looked at. And so here what I've done is given you a book talk to go. Here's the link to the um, book detail page. And then you can see I've in the gray, these are the resources you could use to teach with this book. So here's how you get to the illustrator and the publisher and a couple of blog posts. And sometimes you'll see um, more things like that. Then on the book detail page, you'll also see Book Talks to Go. So you could just click right here and go Book Talks to Go, click right there, and it'll take you to this, um, to the live binder. And you can find it by just going to bit.ly slash JLG Live Binders. So that's a little bit about our character building education books for elementary and some of the resources that you can use to go with those. If you have more questions, just email sales at juniorlibraryguild.com, visit our website, or you can always email me, dford at juniorlibraryguild.com. And remember, always be kind.